So I'm gonna be removing a engine and transmission transfer case assembly from a 98 Jeep Cherokee. This video is going to kind of highlight some of the uh, key parts of removing the assembly. If you're removing just the engine, this video is gonna differ a little bit. Um, you're not gonna to need to do some of the steps, but this will be if you remove the whole assembly it's installed as an assembly in the factory, so um, it's not too bad to remove. If you're removing just the engine, it can be very difficult to get to the bell housing bolts on the back of the engine. Um, so first thing I did was I had the air conditioning drained out um, for ease and because I'm not going to be putting this back in, it's going to go in a different vehicle. I drained the refrigerant. That way I can just remove the compressor and all the accessories with the engine itself. Uh, the first step I'm going to do is remove the air box. That way I can get to this electrical connector and I can unbolt the front end assembly and get it out of the way. Okay, so I removed the air box. That gives me access to this electrical connector down here for the front end. Also, I can get to the power steering lines and the radiator hose to drain the coolant. Uh, there's two screws here to remove the, uh, the bezel. A couple screws, this light comes out. There's a bolt down here. There's a bolt up here in the corner. And then there's a couple bolts along the front. And you'll remove those and this front end assembly will come off. Okay, so I removed the, the grill assembly here. The electrical connector, I fished through the hole uh, so that harness stayed on the grill assembly. Now there's a couple screws here and one here. There'll be a bolt here and here, which look like somebody already broke off. Uh, couple bolts here and this this top plate will pick up um, and that'll give you room to tip back the radiator um, so you can get to some of the connections and get to these AC condenser connections over. Okay so I've moved removed the top plate this is kind of how it came out um, I lifted up just slightly on the when, it, when I got it loose I lifted up and kind of pulled out on the radiator and then everything slid right up uh, next, I'm going to get the battery tray out of the way and undo the AC con condenser lines. And I've clamped off my lower radiator hose over here. I'm going to undo it from the engine. Uh, that way it can drain out and drain straight down as opposed to undoing it here. It'll, it'll leak all over and make a big mess in the corner. So, um, and then I will undo the transmission lines. And there is a special tool for undoing the transmission and condenser. Okay, so on the condenser line, there's this clip. Um, just pops off. And then here's the special tool. You're going to slide that up into the line. You're going to press it. And then you're going to pull the line out. So I already did that on this. I pressed it in. There's a little spring clip in here. And then once you get it, you just pull it out. So it gets it over top of this lip here. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into that. Okay, so I've removed the uh, the radiator condenser assembly, or the radiator and condenser. Um, now you've got access to remove your power steering lines. Um, these things are so corroded. I'll probably replace them. I'll probably just cut them, um, and then and then take them all off when the engine's out of the way. Um, a, a trick for these is rather than use an open end wrench if you just cut them right here you can put a nice six point socket and a breaker bar and then get those out of there uh, next I'm going to do the electrical connections so um, there are two connections here these two and they're going to fish around here and that's what 
all the injectors and everything are plugged into. So we can simply unplug this and that's gonna unplug the engine harness. Um, there's gonna be three connectors down here. And then we're gonna disconnect these wires from the fuse box and I'm just gonna leave the harness right on the engine when I pull it out. Uh, I'm not gonna disconnect all the injectors and the O2 sensors and everything else. I'm just gonna disconnect the engine harness. Okay, so I've undone some of the electrical. Um, these two are engine harness connectors and then I unpinned it and then I've got it laying right down, right here on top of the engine and made sure it was clearly detached from anything. There's a ground cable that's attached up here, so I undid that. Um, over here, there's three connectors. I've got these connectors up out of the way because this is the, the body harness and then the engine harness. There's a ground stud here, so I detached the ground stud because that's part of the body. Um, over here, there are a couple cables on here that go down to the starter. So I've got them pushed over there on the engine side. And then there was a connector here and the one for the AC pressure switch here. And those stay on the body. So I just want to make sure everything's nice, clear, separated, so when I start to tug and pull the engine out, nothing gets pulled, ripped, or damaged. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this uh, line to leave it in the engine bay, um, and I'm going to start to undo some of my cables here. <clears throat> so I've got three cables. This one's going to go to the throttle. Uh, the accelerator pedal so I can just put it in here pop that off <clears throat> this is the uh, cruise control cable so I'll pull on that pop that off you just squeeze these clips in here with like a set of pliers this last one I'm not going to worry about because I'm pulling the engine and transmission together. This is the transmission kick down cable. So it goes down to the transmission. Um, I don't need to separate it because I'm pulling the two together. So I pulled the AC line. I pulled it off here just to get it out of the way so I've got access to the engine mount. Everything else you can now see I've got wiring tucked up in here. And there's just a nice space. There's no wiring or anything running between the two areas. Um, you can do this without draining the AC. You'd pull the compressor, you'd set it off to the side, and the condenser would kind of be hanging up front. I I've done this enough times that it's worth just uh, going to a shop that has a uh, an AC machine, have them evacuate it, and then when you're all done, have them recharge it, and it'll probably be about $100. Well, well worth that aggravation of having the AC compressor in, in your way. Um, next, I'm um, doing the, the vacuum hoses. So there's a vacuum hose I detached here. I wanna make sure it's pushed out of the way. I've got this one for the brake booster. I've got my throttle cable nice and out of the way. I've got my cruise control cable nice and out of the way. There's a vacuum hose right back here. I'll pull that off. Um, and then the last thing I have is these coolant lines. Uh, I'll probably just pull them right up here. And then I'm going to pull the fuel line and I'll show you the fuel line. And then I'll be going underneath the vehicle to release some things, and then I'll pull the engine mounts and tug the thing out. Okay, so I've got the coolant hoses tucked up out of the way. You can really see on this side of the engine, when you look down there, there's a space. There's really no lines or anything going between the engine. On this side, Last thing I got is this fuel line. You're gonna pop off this little cap right here. Uh, you're gonna hit this Schrader valve. 
to release the pressure. Some fuel may spray out of here, so watch your eyes. Um, and then there's a, a fuel line release. This is the tool. You slide it on the line, you pull it in, and then you pull the line off. Uh, sometimes it can take a little, uh, little adjusting to finally get that off. There's one bolt here. And then you can pull the fuel line off to the side and tuck it out of the way. All right, time for the part I really hate. Not having a lift, I like to spend the least amount of time under here. So what we'll do is we've got the rear drive shaft bolts. Um, You'll have to put the vehicle in neutral, jack up the rand slightly, and spin this to be able to get to all four bolts. You've got the front drive shaft bolts. You've got the exhaust manifold bolts up there, which you'll want to probably spray all these down real good. The exhaust manifold bolts, um, probably going to break. They're real tough to get to. What I'm going to do, I know the exhaust manifold's cracked on this. Uh, I made a paint marker line here. I'm going to cut right through the line with the sawzall, and then I'll weld it back together later, uh, rather than mess around with the, the manifold bolts. <clears throat> There's a shifter linkage. A uh, oxygen sensor over here. So unplug the oxygen sensor. I don't have to worry about the speed sensor because that's on the transmission harness, which is part of the engine transmission harness. And then I've got the uh, four-wheel drive linkage right there. Um, four-wheel drive linkage and shifter cable can be removed with uh, just a pry bar. And then the last thing I'll do is remove this, this mount, this cross member. There's four bolts up through these holes, which I sprayed down pretty good with some uh, PV blaster. And then there's four bolts on the corner. Okay, so I've removed both drive shafts. I've got the front drive shaft removed up here. And then I've got these shift linkages. Okay, and the only way I've really found is you, you get in there with a pry bar and you pop them off. And then I'll have to remove these two bolts because the shifter's in the car and so I've got to leave this cable in the car. Um, same here, I've got the transfer case linkages. I just stuck a pry bar in here. I popped that one loose and then I stuck the pry bar in here. Pop this one loose. Um, I'll kind of shift the transmission over to get it out of there as I'm pulling it out. Um, so I've got everything detached underneath. I've got both drive shafts. I've got all the transmission linkages. And I've got the cross member out and it's just sitting on this floor jack here. I'm going to go up to the top, undo the engine mounts and uh, pull this thing out of here. Okay, so I've got everything undone underneath, and I just kind of give it a final look um, to make sure I've got nothing attaching the engine to the body. No, no cables, everything's pretty clean. So I'm going to undo these engine mount bolts right here, just slide them out, and this passenger side engine mount, I'm going to remove these bolts as well and pull the engine mount right out. Um, I did not remove the starter, and I'll get to a certain point, and the starter will want to hit on this. Um, so by removing this mount, it'll give me a little extra clearance so I can snake this thing out as one, one big complete unit. So I got a chain hooked from this front bolt back to the bolt and back. I pulled the engine mount bolt out and then uh, I jack the engine up slightly so the engine will twist. And I pull the bolt out of this engine mount. And the, the one uh, from the bottom side 
is uh, is a little tough to get to, but if you if you jack up the engine slightly so it twists, uh, it'll twist out of the way so you can get to that nut on the bottom. That way you can just pull that engine mount right off and that'll give you plenty of clearance with the oil filter and the starter. Um, so I'm just gonna tug this thing out of here. Before I do that, I'm gonna do, do a double check that there's no cables or anything that I possibly missed. So I've got this thing part of the way out. You kind of pull forward, pull up. You can see over here, um, I'm just barely going to snake by on this exhaust manifold. And on this side, this is why I removed the engine mount. You can see it allows me just enough clearance for the starter to kind of snake by. And, uh, and I'll just continue to kind of go up and out with this. Okay, so I've got the engine uh, completely out. Hey guys, so you can see I'm all finished. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully, if you're thinking about attempting this for the first time, it gives you a little bit of information. If you're just pulling the engine, a few things are gonna be different. I pulled the whole engine and transmission because I'm putting it in a different vehicle. Um, this took about about three hours obviously if I wasn't going to be using the harness and some other things I could have just hacked and cut things and got the time down quite a bit but I need to reuse all, all, all these parts so